Good evening, everyone. When co welcome to the last session of today's open house. And uh, today, now I'm going to talk to you about SHARP, the SUTD Honors and Research Program. My name is Dario, and uh, I'm the director of the program. So the first question you may have is, what is SHARP all about? Okay, and let me go straight to address this point. So the focus of SHARP is you, as a perspective uh, students, extremely interested in research. We want to empower you and allow you to become the best researcher as you can be. And uh, in the next uh, minutes, I will tell you how we're trying to do this. Okay, since we're gonna spend some time together, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. So I'm from Italy, as you may have guessed from my accent. And uh, I, I studied in various universities in Europe and Asia and also in Australia. And uh, there, why am I telling you this? Uh, the reason why I'm telling you this is that, uh, like me, many of my colleagues have found out many interesting things that different universities, top universities in the world do to promote and encourage students in, in being excellent researchers. And we took what we learned from there and we brought it here and we also added the DNA, the typical SCTD DNA, to try to make a best, the best program that we can for you to be the best researcher. So also to tell you a little bit more about myself, since we're talking about research, what do I do as a researcher? Well, I, I work in quantum physics, um, many body quantum physicists, and uh, I look at things like quantum thermodynamics, like how to convert uh, energy into useful work uh, at the nanoscale. And, uh, and some of these the tools that we use, we use uh, heavy numerical tools to understand some of these concepts, which are related to uh, AI, and uh, which is one of the main research directions of, of our university. So this is, you know, um, I do basic science. There are people who do basic science here in SUTD. We also f follow some of the main research areas of the SUTD as we're going to discuss later on. Okay, so enough about myself. Uh, let's talk about, let's start to talk about you. Okay, and uh, now you're in a, a time in your life where you're asking yourself, uh, what, what, what should I do? Which university should I go to? Which degree should I take? And so on and so forth. Uh, and this may be quite stressful or overwhelming. Okay, so I, I have here a few questions that can help you maybe find uh, uh, the right path for you, whatever suits you best, okay? So uh, what do you want from a university education? That's question number one. Uh, what do you want to be in a few years? And what are your current priorities? Okay, so I, I, I had this in my mind when I was thinking about which, which degree to take and, and what to do in my time. So for example, uh, what do you want from university education? Do you want to be in, in power? You want to be future ready, okay? Wh what, are, what do you see yourself in a few years? Do you see yourself in industry, in academia, in a research intensive job? Maybe you don't know the answer, but uh, try start to ask yourself these questions. Uh, it will help you eventually to find the answers. Or what are your current uh, priorities? Do you want to explore something different what you've been thinking you like? Or you want to dive deep into something? Do you want to try to invent new things? Or maybe you just want to spend a lot of time socializing given your, your age. So, yeah, I don't know. You may have many different interests. Think of what, which, which are your main interests and what your priorities, and more importantly, ask yourself, what is your passion? This is extremely important, especially if you want to go into a research-oriented career. As we will discuss later on, uh, passion is really the main driver of, of this pursuit. So let's go now. I talked about myself, I talked about you, let's, let's talk about uh, Sharp itself. Uh, this is one of the special programs in, in SUTD, and you already, uh, in the first few sessions today, you heard about the other two. Let me tell you about Sharp. First of all, uh, Sharp is inside the SUTD, okay? It's not that uh, you choose to be Sharp, but then you cannot do other things that other SUTD students. Every Sharp student goes through the common curriculum and all the experience of SUTD students. So you can profit of all the benefits of being uh, SUTD students, which are great already. You know, the, we have a fantastic student to faculty ratio. We have a, a fantastic active learning in, in the classes. We promote entrepreneurship, design, and so on and so forth. So this, you have it anyway. Also, you may have heard or you may find out more and more watching and following this open house today. Yeah, we, um, 
And so DD is already, despite his young age, has already been recognized as an emerging leader in engineering education. So it's definitely, uh, it's, a, it's a safe bet, okay? And, uh, and uh, independent uh, um, um, reviewers uh, around the world have recognized uh, SUTD as a very a top place for, for your education. Now let's go and dive more deeply into what a uh, SHARP program is, uh, what it constitutes. Of. So there are different parts that on top of the uh, other SUTD students, you, you, you will uh, have been a SHARP student. So there will be pre-research training, some what we call a honor sessions classes. You have even closer faculty mentorship, and I will you will have a better idea of the ratios of student to faculty ratio later on. Then you have internship in local and overseas uh, places. And uh, this is also supported by the fact that all SHARP students uh, will have a research grant and a stipend. So with this research grant, you can use it to travel overseas. Mm. Also, all uh, uh, SHARP students uh, will have uh, a scholarship. Okay. And, uh, and you know, there are many opportunities so that opens up once you have this, uh, these opportunities. And uh, me as a director and whoever is involved in SHARP will really try to find out the things you like most and uh, help you to uh, go to the, the, the best places where you can pursue this research interest. Now, as I said, the whole uh, SHARP students will have a scholarship, and here you can see in this slide in a different set of, of scholarship that you, you, you may obtain. Uh, some of the students actually uh, have their own scholarship, uh, as uh, we will listen later from some of the um, SHARP students you, you meet soon during this, uh, this, uh, this session. Also, I would like to highlight that uh, during the summer, you may, you may go to some uh, overseas experience like the Berkeley uh, summer program, or uh, the design, uh, design uh, activities in, uh, in uh, Zhejiang universities, or the Stam Stanford uh, some international program, and uh, or in, in TU Berlin. Okay, so both in Asia, Europe, and the US. Well, as we discussed with uh, the students, if over the summer you may think of going somewhere else, uh, we, we can try to work out. And thanks to your uh, research grant allowance, there is quite a bit of flexibility for that. So now let's go a bit more in detail on what, uh, how different would be the SHARP curriculum for uh, the SHARP students. Here you see the, in these slides the, the curriculum, the eight terms, and the fresh more uh, um, terms, which are term one, two, and three, in those terms the students will do uh, honor sessions. And I will tell you a bit more about the honor session later, but basically uh, are there for you to um, give you more breath and depth in knowledge, okay, and uh, prepare you to uh, uh, later on in your research activities. Then from term four and five, you are given opportunities, actually you have to uh, do some research projects, which can last one term or two terms. And during this research project, you can uh, uh, either uh, explore different areas that you would like to explore, or if you already decided what you really like, diving deeply in, into that. Then there are summers, and then there's term six, seven, and eight. In, this, in these three terms, you will do a, a long uh, research project, basically one year long research project, which culminates in a thesis defense that you will do in term eight. Okay, and uh, this will really allow you to go very deeply uh, in, into research. It's almost like a, a master thesis that you'll be doing, and, uh, and it will prepare you whether you want to go later on for a PhD or, or whether you want to go uh, in r other research intensive jobs. And um, most likely, uh, given the uh, quality of the students that we have in the program and how we follow them, these tr three terms, uh, um, uh, these three terms uh, project will re result in papers that we shall also help you to secure, uh, or help you to uh, achieve the, the next destination you want to go. You will talk later, you will hear later from some of the students here. Actually, they have already published some papers and they're just in the second year of the SUTD. Okay, so this is just to give you an idea of how we promote the research in, in our students. So, let me tell you a little bit more now about the research, uh, the honor sessions, and later on I will talk to you about the um, uh, research opportunities in the CTD. This year uh, is the second year we have been running the program, and uh, in the first term we uh, decided to give um, a little bit more uh, depth uh, and breadth in the knowledge of mathematics, and in particular with computational statistics and nonlinear systems and chaos, which are uh, um, 
um, ways of, uh, uh, of, of understanding the world around us, which are, are very useful and they really empower the students to understand a lot of things that can be applied later on. This for half of the term. The other half, the students will do a group project and uh, this term, this finished a few, uh, a few uh, like in December, and uh, some students have fantastic results from that, and now they're continuing to work on it, and, and I think it will end up in some very nice papers. So there's session two this year we're doing uh, for the first part organic chemistry and then uh, some uh, primer on lasers and and uh, fiber optics and applications. So term two, while term one was more abstract, term two is much more uh, ba uh, lab based, and uh, the second portion of the, the of the uh, of the of the term, um, the students will actually have a group project again, but it will be in a lab. Okay, so that now they in improve on their uh, lab skills as well. Term three, you, we will look at modeling and numerical methods and statistical physics. So these are things that are fairly common in applied mathematics and in physics, but they have uh, a uh, a big breadth of applications going from cities uh, to AI to healthcare, uh, as we'll see some examples later. So I mentioned to you that uh, there are many faculty involved in SHARP, uh, and, uh, and here we see some of the faces. We have already 14 people uh, involved in, in lecture in, in this class and following in your projects. And consider the number of students, which at the moment for per batch is uh, less than 10, we have a fantastic <laughs> instructor stu uh, to students ratio. We are aiming to increase the number of students in the program up to maybe uh, 25 uh, as, as times goes. Now, some of the examples of the project that the students did, uh, you see, the, um, uh, I, will, I will give you some of the names, uh, like CHOP or DON'T CHOP, which is a, a study on the statistical analysis of whether you should CHOP or not the seat in the, in the canteen, but also uh, a project on phase transition in urban traffic, uh, or computational uh, studies on uh, epidemic spreading. Now, you see these three, uh, first three uh, topics, uh, they are based on statistical uh, physics and, st and statistics, but they do apply on uh, general topics like cities and healthcare, uh, which are some of the main research areas in the CTD. Uh, then you have things on hash tables and, and Newton uh, Repsons and uh, lattice-based cryptography, which are also applied to uh, data science and uh, very important applications. Then also studies which are a little bit uh, um, more applied to EPD, like physics and design of fractal capacitors, which actually one of the students did this project, and you'll hear from her later. Or, or machine learning and quantum physics. See, it's very important that you learn different topics in depth, and then you go and try to find connections, and this brings a lot of innovations. And this innovation, this idea, you can bring them to uh, some of the main areas of research in, in SUTD. As I showed before, some of the topics may sound that may be academic or abstract, but they really fit and they can really help in, uh, in, in these main research areas. In SUTD also we have plenty of uh, research centers uh, like uh, International Design Center, DMND, NAMIC, and iTrust, and uh, the Lee Kuan Yew Center for Innovative Cities, just to name a few. So if your uh, inter research interests uh, align with any of these uh, institutes, it will be fantastic. We can definitely help you to be integrated in them and work closely with them. Some questions that I receive often about uh, Sharp uh, is, uh, uh, what is life as a researcher? Uh, what skills do I need to be a good researcher? Am I good, you know, do I have what it takes to be a good researcher? So. Um, just to give you a guidelines of uh, qualities that are useful, I can say, first of all, uh, research is a continuous journey. We never stop because we are never satisfied of the results we have. We always think that we can do better. And uh, this is exciting at one point, but it can also be frustrating because uh, there is always that little bit more that you would like to do or that a lot more that you would like to do. And so you need perseverance, you need stamina, and that's where passion plays a big role. Because if passion, you will be able to go through all these uh, low periods and then aim for the, the big goals. Then res the research world is very competitive. There are many excellent people around the world, and you work all of a sudden you know, from trying to be the best person in your class, or you end up trying to you compete internationally with everybody in the world who works on the same topic. So 
it's, it's best that you try to do something first that you like and that suits your skill set, okay? So that you, you can be competitive. Then you need to find the right balance, and this is a very difficult struggle between diving deeply in a topic and having have a broad view. You need to have a firm understanding and be extremely competent in something, but you should not be too lost in it. You need to find the connections uh, so that you can find application. And maybe also what you do can be applied in industries. Okay, whatever research you do, does not uh, you have to think of it, of it only as academic research. It can be also for industry. So one fantastic thing that I really love about research is that you are surrounded by like-minded people. So <laughs> maybe, okay, uh, maybe I talk for myself, maybe some of you can, can uh, have experienced that, uh, but maybe you're interested in some topics. Maybe, I for example, I was interested in quantum physics. Not many of my friends were interested in that topic, okay? So sometimes you feel a bit uh, cast out. But then all of a sudden, as you are doing research, you're, you're in a research environment, and everybody likes the same things that you like. And it's a fantastic experience, a big change. So uh, if you, if you are, uh, are really interested in a topic, uh, start working in a research group, and it will be a fantastic experience. Also, you get mo to spend most of the time doing what you like, and, and you can choose what to do. And as a, as a researcher, especially as you grow up uh, after the PhD, you can choose more and more your research direction. And that's a lot of uh, interesting freedom that uh, is maybe not guaranteed if you do a different job. Okay, so this is a bit of some of the my views on some of the questions that students usually ask me about uh, being a researcher. But if you have other questions, please ask the questions in, uh, in the system and we'll uh, address them later on. So I'm sure now you're very excited, you want to apply for Sharp, and the question is how to do it. And uh, yeah, well, it's very simple. You apply as for all, all the other uh, HD programs, and then you just click that you want to apply for Sharp. You will be asked a few extra questions. And what we're looking for are uh, talented students. So we're looking for outstanding A-levels and or outstanding poly results. Or and uh, we are looking for uh, students who may or not have done research yet, but we they have that inquisitive mind the quantitative thinking that we think is really suitable for the program. And this is program is open to all nationalities. So don't worry, wh wherever you are from, uh, whatever your know, nationality is, uh, you're welcome in the program. Okay, obviously we w all SCTD students are interviewed to enter in SCTD. Shop students also go through a, a also an interview process. So to summarize and, uh, and to let time to uh, the students, uh, maybe you, I'm sure you want to hear from the students. Uh, let me summarize a few things, okay, about Sharp. The, we have the honor sessions, which will be reflected on the transcript. If you pass the honor session, this will be reflected on the transcript. This will actually help you to show your, uh, your future employer or your future mentor that uh, you're really skilled in, in, in these areas. Then uh, <coughs> you will do these Sharp Euro projects and it will also be reflected on the transcript. You will get a research grant with travel opportunities. You get a stipend, okay? And you get exposure to research from year one, as you will see soon, extremely close mentorship from week one. And on top of this, all the pros of being an SUTD student, which are already pretty excellent. So thank you very much. If you are interested, go to this website or scan the QR code and uh, um, and if you have other questions, you can ask the questions in the system. Now, I would like to take the opportunity to introduce to you two of uh, the pioneer Sharp students, okay, Vanessa and Shui. Okay. Vanessa, uh, she comes from uh, River Valley High School, and uh, what I like and I'm impressed about her is her amazing interest in design and in education. She has been mentoring students, secondary students, and also here um, uh, for a long time. And uh, her, her interest in design and, uh, and uh, in education and mentoring is already reflected in the uh, in research papers and, and research work that she's been doing uh, here in SUDD. And I th I, I'm really excited and, uh, um, to, to hear more from her now. Okay, so Vanessa, please. 
Thank you, Prof. Paletti. So that was a very good uh, introduction to Sharp. So very good evening to all who have joined us in this live stream. I'm Vanessa and I'm a second year engineering product development student and I'll be sharing about my somewhat unconventional experiences in Sharp, which might not fit into what is commonly known as uh, research. So I guess everybody's first question is, why did I choose uh, SUTD? And the answer can be actually found in two statistics. One is the faculty to student ratio, and the second is the facilities per capita. So with two instructors and one teaching assistant assigned to each cohort class in the first year, I saw that there will be many opportunities for me to clarify my doubts uh, whenever an instructor was teaching during lesson. And so that kind of motivated me to join SUTD compared to the larger universities. And secondly, while the other larger universities have many more facilities, they also have much more students. So that translates to lesser opportunities per student. So for example, when I went to visit the NTU Triple E campus, I was actually quite surprised that there are only three 3D printers available in the student maker space compared to SUTD's two 3D printers per cohort classroom. So I'm very sure things are much better now, but back then when I was applying for universities, I valued the availability of rapid prototyping tools for student use, and to me, SUTD seemed like the obvious choice. All right, so the reason behind me choosing Sharp is actually more cringe-inducing. So in, uh, in secondary four, I chanced upon a YouTube video where a physicist from the University of Nottingham was giving a tour of the Large Hadron Collider in CERN at Switzerland. And as he points to the megastructure behind him and explains how it relates to research, you know, I thought that, well, if research is op about operating big, cool machines, then I want to do research someday. So, well, in JC, having thoroughly satisfied myself that I was in no position to do any form of information creation because of my very poor grades, so I put my dream aside and I looked towards engineering instead, which I found that I was better at. So, but upon seeing the 15K funding available for sharp students, I thought to myself, you know, maybe there is still some hope for me to operate big cool machines as part of research after all. So, uh, out of a miracle of my uh, A-level results, I got into Sharp, and as we all know, the first year in Sharp is all honor sessions. So the topics covered were interesting in and of itself, so they range from things like cryptography, quantum mechanics, to organic chemistry, so on and so forth. But I felt that they were really theoretical and tough, and you know, I walked out of class each week feeling that I've not learned a single thing, or I didn't understand anything that was covered in class. But so I shamelessly begged instructors for consults, I'll admit, and I found that the instructors were more than willing to help me out. So as a result, I was able to maintain my grades enough to remain in the program, and although there were times where I felt like quitting, so I will elaborate more on that later. So for me, the most memorable moment was during the honors uh, session in Term 2, uh, where I did a physics project on the design of fractal capacitors. So for those who do not know, a capacitor is something like an electronic component that stores charges. So um, I 3D printed a fractal capacitor and it's made out of polylactic acid, which is a very common 3D printing material. And I liked it because I was finally able to utilize my skills in computer-aided design and 3D printing. So. So contrary to what it looks like on my resume, I did not enter Sharp knowing exactly what I wanted to do. I did not enter Sharp thinking that I love design. So in fact, it was actually an undergraduate research opportunities program, also known as Europe, that kind of pointed me in the right direction. So in term one, I did this Europe with a faculty member that was about mentoring secondary school students in design thinking. And this was part of the MOE innovation program. So the project appealed to me not just because I had previously mentored secondary school students during my JC days, but also because I had previously done a science project in secondary four where I was taught design thinking by a very fierce teacher who called it critical and inventive thinking. And while I learned a lot by the end of the project, I felt that my learning was mediated by a fear of punishment rather than a true understanding of the rationale behind what I was doing. So I went into this project with the mentality can I get these students to learn the same things that I did 
but without resorting to the fear tactic. So while mentally exhausting, the project was a success and I have since gone on to mentor other students such as during uh, Start On Junior 2019, which is a technopreneurship competition uh, that focuses a lot on the rapid, rapid prototyping process. Um, uh, so did the MOE Innovation Program in 2020 and the reason why you see this screenshot is because um, it was during the COVID period and we couldn't visit the schools. And uh, I recently um, just mentored a group of secondary three students from SST uh, as part of the collaboration between SETD and SST um, in the big D camp. So the D actually stands for design. So, well, more importantly during that Europe, I learned through my interactions with the faculty member and, uh, and the faculty member actually introduced me to this thing called design education research, which is a whole new world that I didn't know existed. And you can tell that I was hooked. And so you can kind of see why I was thinking about quitting Sharp during my first year. So here I was in you know, something like a CCA, like as a fifth row, that can be considered as borderline research and I was doing something that I really enjoyed. And to me, I felt like I was writing a past wrong. But at the same time, I was also struggling quite a bit in the actual research program that is Sharp. But however, I was glad I stayed on because I, Sharp is considered like a form of prestige and it can get you places where you thought you never, that you never thought that was possible. So the, my case in point is that I mentioned to the faculty member whom I did the mentoring with that I was in Sharp and I would like to immerse myself more into the world of research and he offered me the opportunity to work with him on two out of a series of four papers on design pedagogy innovation. So I tapped into my experience with computer-aided design software and I modeled experimental setups used in those papers as um, diagrams and I was very fortunate enough to get to be able to be a co-author on both these papers and one of these papers is currently under review. So being in Sharp has also taught me uh, has also allowed me to request an audience with busy professors who they've never taught me before. And this came in useful when I was looking for potential advisors for my undergraduate thesis. So um, being in Sharp also meant that I got to work on different projects with different faculty members. And I picked up a lot of new skills along the way. So for example, I did a project on uh, big data analytics uh, on Apple airport runway capacities last term. And through that, I picked up some basic data analysis using RStudio, which is a, a software. So today, I'm actually working on my undergraduate thesis on identifying prototyping competencies in design education. So my work adds value to the work of a current PhD student, Shravya, and she's trying to come up with a standardized and comprehensive framework to assess a student uh, to assess students in the whole process of design thinking, which up to now has been subjective and it varies usually from course to course and somewhat from instructor to instructor. So um, through a mixed methods approach, so I um, take a holistic lens in analyzing the processes and factors affecting the complex concept of prototyping, as well as a reductionist lens in breaking down these competencies by different levels of educational attainment and so these methods that I use, which includes um, both um, structured interviews and also survey questionnaires, they, con uh, they do consider, they, they have the breadth of um, social sciences uh, as well as the depth of the hard sciences. So I'm actually being advised by Professor Lucien Blessing from the SUTD MIT International Design Center. And she's one of the pioneers in design education research. And also my co-advisor is Dr. Franklin Anariba, and he's the faculty member whom I worked with mentoring in my first term, and he's in charge of data collection. So I also have a, our co-advisor, she is um, Professor Kali Lauf from the University of Minnesota, and she is an expert on prototyping, having done her PhD dissertation in that area. And um, yeah, so the last person you see on the screen is Shravya, who is the PhD student. So my advisors have been really helpful with clarifying any doubts that I have. And you know, our discussions are always very fruitful and they always run into overtime because everyone brings to, a tab to the table a unique perspective based on his or her uh, areas of expertise. So if you want to ask me, uh, uh, ask me what excites me about 
the research, I would say it is those mind blown moments um, whereby I am uh, like uh, I'm introduced to new ways of looking at things which I have never thought of before, or that when I gain like profound new insights based on uh, thesis discussions. So of course, the other good thing about uh, being in research is that I get to attend academic and industry conferences um, that are. Uh, that you know, when you get to see somebody uh, at those conferences, like you see those hotshot names, they talk about their own research, and then like you see, um, you get you chance across their work, th their research paper in your own work, and then you're like, hey, you know, I know this person, you know, and you, you get to put a face to their name. So if like, you no, know, um, I used to think that research was about operating, you know, big cool machines. But it's not just that, because Sharp has taught me um, that research is, uh, is, is okay to not know uh, what's going on, it's okay to be confused, because mo most of the time, um, being able to be comfortable with uncertainty is part and parcel of research itself. So, you know, um, research is actually, to me, about the... Is, it's actually about pushing the radical envelope uh, of knowledge uh, out of each field. And it's also about the synthesis of ideas across different fields, some of which may not appear to overlap uh, with each other at first glance. So um, upon graduation, I'm not sure whether I want to uh, further my studies by getting a master's degree or a PhD. Um, because as a DSTA scholar, I'm uh, supposed to serve my four-year bond at DSO National Laboratories, where I have been deployed. And um, as uh, I'll be working in the Emerging Systems Division as an accredited electrical engineer, and uh, most of my work will be on coming up with uh, electromagnetic applications for weapons for the Singapore Armed Forces. So, of course, if I do, uh, after my bond, if I want to pursue further studies, if I'm under industry sponsorship, let's say from DSO, I'll probably be doing in a field that is more technical, so something like maybe mechanical or electrical engineering. But if it was up to me, if it was up to, me to decide, uh, I'll probably do uh, something that is more related to design education. But one thing I know for sure is that I will continue to mentor students in the next few years to come. So with that, I've come to the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Vanessa. F fantastic. Now, uh, I would like to introduce to you uh, Shui and another sharp student from the first batch. So he's also in the second year. Um, Vanessa is in the, in the EPD pillar, Engineer Product Development pillar. Shui is in the ISTD pillar, uh, Information uh, Science and Technology and Design. So. Shui comes from National Junior College and uh, over the years has done different uh, research activities before coming to CTD. And uh, he seems to have a, a keen interest uh, in two areas. Uh, one is uh, computer science and the other one is physics. And uh, so now with some of the projects that he's doing, he's, he's trying to uh, work on both. Uh, and there is. Uh, and actually, he's, uh, the he's in the unfortunate situation of working with me at the moment, <laughs> but we'll find out more about that later. So we work on, the, uh, on, on these topics where we uh, um, uh, merge uh, uh, neural networks and quantum systems. But I'm sure uh, I'm very curious to see, and I'm sure you're very curious to hear more about, about it from Shui. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining this live stream. I'm Shui. So like Prof. Dari has said, I spent six years in National Junior College. And during this, those six years, my life mainly revolved around two things. First, basketball, my favorite sport, and research. So as you can see from the photos, I, had, I was very fortunate to be able to participate in a few research projects. Um, the first photo actually shows my first attempt at research, uh, where I went to Moscow and did a research project in organic synthesis. I also did a short attachment at Security NUS, working on computational physics. So when I was in JC, I took a H3 research as a subject, and I also represented Singapore at the Intel SF uh, in, in US in 2016. So given the early exposure to research, it was quite natural for me to consider uh, research as a career. 
And that's also one of the main motivates, motivating factors that, that pushed me to join uh, SUTD. So uh, as mentioned by Prof. Dario and Vanessa just now, um, in, in the SHARP program, we'll have uh, honor sessions or advanced classes in the first year. So here is a list of the classes that I have uh, taken in the first year. I think currently the list has been updated, but so you can see that on the, on the screen. Uh, the modules that I put a smiley face right next to are the modules that I enjoyed the most. So one very fascinating or interesting thing that I took away from the uh, honor session is that these advanced classes are not just like any other ordinary content-based content uh, modules. Um, they are actually they actually come with challenging yet stimulating homework questions. So for example, Parental Paradox was the first module that we have learned. So Parental Paradox actually refers to the fascinating phenomenon in which two losing games can be combined to give rise to a winning outcome as shown on the graph on the left here. So as you can see on the graph, there are two downward going curves that actually represent the individual games A and B. However, surprisingly, when you combine these two games in a periodic way or a random way, you actually achieve um, a winning outcome, as you can see by the, the other two curves that are going upwards. So one of the homework questions that, that was given to us asked us to modify the game rules creatively as long as the paradoxical winning outcome is retained. So I was able to uh, take inspiration from my previous research um, experience, so particularly the one that I had at Security NUS. In that project, I, I incorporated a periodic function in the system and a surprising result was observed. So I was thinking, hey, will it be possible to incorporate periodic functions into Prandtl's paradox? So while I was having a lot of fun trying to incorporate different kind of like functions or different kind of like parameters into the Prandtl paradox, I wasn't aware that it was going to morph into a proper research statement. And little did I know that it will also end up in a proper publication. So this is actually the first paper that I have co-authored with uh, Prof. Chung, that, that's a, that researches uh, Prandtl paradox. Currently, I'm working on two uh, researchers. The first one is machine learning and quantum physics uh, under Prof. Dario. Mm, so the interesting thing about this is that you're trying to apply machine learning techniques to quantum many, uh, quantum many body problems. The other group, the other project that I was I'm working on currently is the is an extension from my previous paper where we look at the hist history dependent Prandtl's paradox. So one thing that I want to highlight here is that, uh, very fascinating, these two, these two projects are both derived from honor sessions. The machine learning and quantum physics project was a mini project that was conducted in term two honor session. And Prandtl paradox, as mentioned earlier, was, uh, was derived from the homework question in, in the very first module. So I guess to me that is what sharp or sharp honor sessions are about. We equip the student with a solid foundation and then give them a new direction to try and then uh, to try and bring out the best of themselves. Currently, I haven't formalized formalized my undergrad thesis yet, and I'm also considering a master or PhD study. But I'm not sure which field I'm going to do. Probably in one of these two, computer science or physics. So this will be the end of my sharing. Uh, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shui. So very exciting. I hope, I hope you enjoyed uh, both sharings. I, I definitely did. And uh, now uh, the floor is open for questions. OK. How difficult are the advanced classes on sessions in year one? So if I have to answer, I would say they're OK. <laughs> but maybe let the student answer <laughs> first. <laughs> Go ahead. 
Uh, hi. I think the honor sessions they are they are definitely challenging, but with decent amount of of efforts, I think they are manageable. For me, in my first year, the biggest challenge that I faced or where I struggled the most was I just came out of NS, so all the I wasn't very sharp with all the math and all the analysis. So it took me quite a while to get used to you know, thinking things like mathematically. But uh, one thing for sure is that the faculty and the instructors, they are always there to help. I, I managed to like, arrange a lot of consultations with them. So I think there's no uh, trouble in getting help. Yeah. Maybe Vanessa, you want to highlight a bit? Well, uh, actually, <laughs> I guess because I don't have a research background and I'm also not particularly academically inclined, so I'll say I, I, I tend to put in a lot more effort into this homework uh, that is uh, assigned to us during the honor sessions. So um, I do agree with Shui that you know the instructors are more than willing to help. Um, actually, in my presentation, I did put up a picture of a email thread that I had with um, one of the lecturers who conducted uh, the honor sessions. And it basically went on that I was his most regular uh, student at his consultation sessions, also known as office hours, for um, every single week that uh, I was, that, that he taught that uh, advanced class, I would definitely uh, arrange a, a consultation session with him. So, um, but I think with a fair bit of effort uh, put into the homework. It is, it is still possible to pass, although um, I'm not very sure if I would, had I done anything differently, I would have gotten better results. I guess the instructors do try not to fail us as far as possible, <laughs> I, I, I guess. So um, we, we try to make sure that uh, you're equipped. And you know, since, uh, the results will be uh, reflected on the transcript. We want to make sure that when people see the sharp students coming out and it's passed, and it's passed this on our sessions, uh, it it's, it means something. It means that uh, the students are really competent, and so it qualifies you and it qualifies also the sharp students in all the future years. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Th yeah. This is what we are trying to do. So the bar is quite high. Okay, uh, but I think this is for your good and for the good of the program itself and all the other sharp students in the future. Yeah, I guess I also like to add that honor sessions, uh, when it's reflected in our transcript, is actually pass fail. So it, there is no letter grade assigned like um, an A would, of course, give you more satisfaction and would. It's actually you're more pass or no record. So oh if yes, you don't pass, yes. uh, don't worry, <laughs> it will not be reflected. <laughs> yes, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay, so the, que the next question is also about the transcript. Uh, how will the transcript for sharp students differ from the others? Okay, so first of all, uh, for the honor sessions, uh, if you pass the honor session, it will, it will be reflected on, uh, in your transcript. And for the Europe, uh, sharp euro projects, um, also in the case, we, we want to make sure that at every term, you have worked well enough in towards uh, your research goals. So there will be an evaluation at the end of each term. This is also to guarantee that uh, the instructors is following you closely and making sure uh, all, all the things are, are well in place. So at the end of the term, uh, the instructors will uh, let uh, the SHARP programs know whether the students have worked well. And, and in that case, if, if the instructor says the students work well, that will be reflected in the transcript as well. So in the transcript, we will show that you have passed uh, the honor sessions and you're passing different uh, Europe, uh, um, sharp Europe's. Now, this is also important because as I mentioned before, sharp students have a stipend and a research grant. This research grant is uh, uh, given to you as long as you stay in the program. So as long as you are able to uh, um, do, do two out of three of the honor sessions, pass two out of three of the honor sessions, and uh, pass your sh Euro projects, then you will be eligible to get this, uh, this uh, research, research stipend, and the stipend and the research grant. 
So this is this is also important why we do that. Okay. Uh, how many um, Polytechnic students have taken up Sharp? Uh, did they have any research background prior to admission? So currently, uh, we have I think no students, no uh, from Polytechnics. Am I correct? Yes. What? But what we what we have done, okay, is uh, the Sharp Honor sessions are open to the Sharp students. Currently, um, the number of Sharp students is fairly small. Um, so to make the um, the environment more conducive, we invite a few selected other students in the, in the SUTD to attend and participate in these classes. For these classes, various uh, uh, Polytechnic students have, uh, have participated and actually have done extremely well. Um, so we are open to Polytechnic students and I'm sure there will be, there will be some coming in the program in the, in the future years. Hopefully already this year. Why did uh, uh, SUTD launch the SUTD uh, Honors and Research Program? So I guess this question also I should answer. <laughs> okay, uh, the next one you will take it. Okay, so for uh, uh, w when we started, we noticed uh, that some students uh, were had the bandwidth to do more, and if, but if we were doing more. Um, it was not reflected significantly in the transcript. And so it, it would be harder for them to stand out. So with this program, we have the students who have the bandwidth and the ability to stand out. And they, already, they would already do uh, research activities. We do this, one, to ensure that they can stand out. So that's why whatever they do will be reflected on the transcript. But also, uh, by putting a program around, we try to guide them so that they can be the best researchers they can be, which is one of the first things I told you at the beginning of the session. So this is why we, we say, okay, l we can reflect on the transcript, but let's try to have a program so that we can, uh, a bit with which is a bit more structured, we can help them. And uh, so th so then we, we started to think, oh, okay, how we do it? We looked out, people do things around the world, and uh, we thought about what we do here and how to integrate it best with already the SUDD pedag pedagogy. And we came out with these solutions of the honor sessions and the various uh, projects. So yeah, that's why the, uh, the SHARP program exists. Um, do you want to take this since you're in e EPD, Vanessa? Um, I guess the curriculum of SHARP is uh, more research focused definitely like in the normal EPD pillar um, what I'm learning is usually like um, like last term I learned uh, structures which is um, a little bit more on the civil and mechanical uh, engineering side uh, foundation and I also learned uh, circuits and electronics which is um, more the electrical engineering side of things and um, I guess the, uh, and this year I'm also learning, of course, um, systems and control. So, uh, uh, sorry, th this year as in like this term because we're still in the first term of the year. And uh, I'm also being in the electrical engineering track, uh, I'm also doing uh, electromagnetics and application. So um, these are more um, industry uh, focused. Uh, courses so like they teach me things like antenna theory. I know some of my uh, classmates who are take, planning to take up um, mechanical engineering or uh, I, I guess healthcare as well. They are taking uh, fluid dynamics, so they focus more on um, uh, sorry uh, fluid mechanics. So they they do things like they run um, uh, computational fluid dynamic simulations, while I run um, uh, electromagnetic. Uh, simulations and so these are all very geared towards the industry whereas um, for um, Sharp it's more uh, research focused although I would say that um, one thing that uh, Sharp and EPD uh, coincide with I guess would be my line of research in design because EPD is very design focused as well so like um, this term I'm actually taking um, engineering design innovation so it's a uh, uh, it's a term-long design project, and I find that um, because of the 
the work that I've done in prototyping, I'm better able to contribute uh, substance, uh, sub a substantial amount to my group uh, when it comes to thinking about how we should like prototype um, uh, certain aspects of uh, our ideas. So I think that's where it, it uh, shares like some commonalities. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Vanessa. What we would like to emphasize is that sharp is, is not a degree. So we'll have sharp students in EPD and sharp students in ICD and so on and so forth. So it, all of these things that sharp students do are additional to, to what they will be doing in uh, EPD or in, or in the other pillars. Uh, um, maybe uh, I, I take this moment to ask a question <laughs> to maybe show you since uh, you haven't talked. So uh, any of the things that you did during the, the sharp owner sessions or your Euro projects helps you or, or finds connections, you find connections with some of the things you are doing in ICD? Mm, yeah, I definitely can find there are like some links uh, from the sh my sharp project to my course, which is ISTD. So one example would be that, oh, before that, uh, let me introduce a bit my, about my sharp project. So I'm working with Prof Dario on applying quantum, on applying machine learning techniques onto quantum many body problems. So in this simulation, we need to use CPUs or GPUs to calculate, uh, to run simulations. So I guess like um, since the first term that we had this project, which is term four, or actually term two, I already need to read up on how to do uh, synchronization and multi-threading in, in, in process management. So this really helped me in gaining uh, early exposure to uh, to, a, to a mode that I'm learning currently, which is uh, computer systems engineering. So I guess like you can always see there are multiple links to your research project and the modules that are obtained currently. Thank you very much. Next question. Okay. Um, can males serving Singapore National Service apply for SHARP? Will place be reserved for NSMN for post NS mission? The answer is yes. Uh, and I think we have a few already in the pipeline who have applied. And, uh, actually, when did you apply? Were you in NS when you applied? Uh, I applied after my NS. Uh, yeah. After your NS. But yeah, I know students have applied before NS and they've been given an offer already. Okay. <laughs> okay. What is quantum transport all about and how would you be able to better adapt to quantum related subjects if you are weak in quantum physics? Okay. Um, I guess the question is for me. <laughs> so, the um, quantum transport uh, is basically, uh, let's say you look at conductivity uh, of a material. Um, now, you may know that uh, 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 the relationship between voltage and the current related to the resistance. Now the question is, where does this resistance come from? Okay, and uh, and then you try to study the materials, and then maybe you find out that it doesn't really apply all the time exactly, and then maybe you find that uh, uh, the resistance depends on some material properties uh, or how the atoms are uh, and the electrons move, uh, how the atoms are structured and how the electrons move around. So there is a lot of studies on uh, uh, how to change, how to design materials that uh, have certain transport properties. And maybe you have heard about superconductivity. So th there are, I mean, the field of quantum transport is very, very broad and it has already applications uh, 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 these days. Um, what I do is a bit more uh, fundamental and uh, a bit more far in the fu future, uh, but there is this research that goes uh, from the very applied one, uh, experimental, to the more uh, futuristic. Now, the second half of this question is quite interesting because it says, uh, uh, how can I do this in case I'm weak in quantum physics? So, I mean, my answer to this is, you're still very young. Okay, and uh, I probably you you have not had uh, uh, a certain exposure to quantum physics. It is actually many of the things in quantum physics are actually not that hard. Is there is a bit of linear algebra, and 
and uh, it's something that can be picked up um, even later in the years. So don't put yourself down. Uh, don't think you're weak in quantum physics until uh, you're tried. There are actually some uh, very simple introduc introductory books. And uh, from this year, we'll be teaching basics of quantum mechanics to first year students in HTD. And w we know that it can be, it can be taught with uh, simple maths. Uh, so don't worry about that. And um, maybe you have been reading things about, uh, I don't know, the philosophy of quantum mechanics. And some of these things can be uh, uh, misleading. So don't worry about that. If you think the quantum transport is interesting, uh, write to me. OK. <laughs> and then we can see what we can do. OK. Good. Let's see if whether there is another question. What is the amount of stipend a research grant a sharp student would be receiving? Let, let the student answer this question since uh, they are eager to wait for it uh, or, or they are receiving partial of it already. Okay. Okay, so I guess I have to answer this question. Um, so um, the amount uh, of funding, I guess you can call it that, um, that will be offered to you uh, upon your admission to Sharp is actually $15,000 and that will be split up into uh, $7,500 worth of um, stipends and $7,500 uh, dollars worth of research grants. So um, for the stipends, um, these will be given out in um, $1,500 chunks every term for starting from term four uh, upon successful completion of a Sharp Europe which is compulsory. And um, for the research grant, um, I guess uh, I will defer to Prof Poletti on what they can be used for. Yes, so the research grant, you can use it to buy some equipment, like small equipment, of course, not the large Hadron Collider setup that Vanessa showed us before. Uh, but also you can use it for travel. Uh, of course, for travels, uh, you can go for conferences. Uh, wherever you go, you should be presenting something. And, and then you can use it also for travel. Or for example, for the summer period, uh, you want to spend the summer somewhere, uh, and then you can use it, and then you go there, maybe you do a presentation, and then you spend, you spend your, your time there. You can also use it for, for that. So you have, uh, you have these um, two main ways of spending the research grant. Yes. Okay, how do I find the research project? Um, we maybe um, you can say how you found your research project, and maybe you can give suggestions of how other students could find the research projects. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I guess this question is also kind of like twofold. Um, one is how do you find a sharp Europe? So because these are compulsory, so if you are like me in term four, I I'm not sure if I. Like back in term four, I'm not. I wasn't sure whether I wanted to do a, like a very long uh, project on uh, design education research. So um, I actually took up a, a data analytics project in uh, airport runway capacities, and so that that one was because um, there is actually a list of projects that are available, and uh, I think faculty will apply for Sharp Europe's. Uh, apply for students for Sharp Europe's and then uh, if you haven't found one independently, uh, you can pick from that list and uh, yeah, you can, you can pick one and you, you'll just do that research project. But I guess also um, another way to look at this question is, um, well, let's say I have something that I'm interested in and so how do I um, make that into a research project? So like for example, I was interested in mentoring, how do I like how, how did we end up um, c coming from? Oh well, you know, I'm I'm just doing um, like uh, external activities with um, other schools. How do I formalize that into a research project? So I guess uh, for me, I considered three factors. Uh, firstly, was of course uh, the advisor style. Like, who do I want advising this project, uh, supervising this project, and uh, what is their style of advising slash supervising? So like, were they hands on, were they hands off? Um, what sort of uh, help would they provide? Uh, yeah, so of course the second thing that I looked for was whether uh, 
did, uh, did a faculty member have um, sufficient funding? So, uh, well, of course, if you've got no funding, then there's not much you can do, or you're limited in a sense. Um, in certain areas, perhaps, um, I guess for me, not really, because I'm still doing one that is more um, human-centric, so I'm more limited towards um, the number of uh, human subjects that I have access to. Um, but yeah, funding is something that can be considered um, uh, when selecting um, uh, faculty members to be uh, to formalize that uh, what your idea of research into a project, and of course, last but not least, is whether the f the faculty member himself or herself has an interest in your project. So, well, of course, if there is no interest, then there's nothing to be said. But uh, with the diverse range of um, uh, research that uh, both tenured and non-tenured uh, faculty members are doing in NCTD, I'm quite sure you can probably find somebody uh, who uh, is doing something tangential to um, what uh, your interests lie. Thank you very much, Vanessa. Um, w one thing I can add is that, uh, yes, we propose a list. So basically, as Vanessa said, you can propose a project or you can choose from a list of projects we find. And uh, sometimes the project, uh, maybe the idea is not particularly well defined. And so then uh, I discuss with them or I, I point to the person who should be able to help you because, you know, I'm not expert in every field. Uh, so, for example, I send Vanessa to talk to certain professors and then that's how the project was developed. And I did the same with other students. They were interested in different topics. And I said, okay, this is, these are a few professors you should talk to. Let's 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 get this discussion going, and let's see what we can do. So you see that it, since the number of shop students is very small, uh, we help you very much to try to find uh, the the best project for you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, this is day one of uh, STD Open House. Come tomorrow to hear about all the others uh, uh, degrees and uh, opportunities that uh, you can have in STD. Thank you very much. Bye.